Hey y'all, it's Milena, and I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. It ain't no joke, this ain't funny. If you down, let's get this money. Stack, stack it to the ceiling. Pop them bands, count that for me. All right, so we have Milena off the porch. We are super excited to have you here. How have you been feeling? I am really good. I'm excited to be here. Super excited. <laughs> we have been going through some really crazy times, but how have you been able to stay motivated creatively throughout these crazy times? And I think like during the pandemic, it kind of just forced you to shut down. So it's either you have to be creative or you're going to be bored as hell. So I feel like you had to just get some creative juices flowing. Really? How were you able to like really get your creative juices flowing? Um, honestly, I listen to a lot, a lot of music, like when I'm cleaning, when I'm cooking, when I'm like doing everything. And so that gets me in the mood to write. So when I'm in that mood, I'll just like lock myself up and I'll just start going. Same. Girl, I don't know why, but I just feel like you have a self-care routine. Yeah, I do. I, do. <laughs> I try. I feel like that's so important in like your mental health balance. I try. <laughs> oh my God, can you give us a scoop on like what you do just for the people watching that need a self-care routine? Yeah, honestly, like I suffer from like anxiety a lot. So one thing, it's so crazy. One thing that helps my anxiety is cleaning. So when you're cleaning, I like to like put music on. And then when I'm in the mood, I'll be like, okay, let me go right. Cause I like the way that sounds and it just gives you like a good energy. So yeah. <laughs> I love that so much. Oh, my God. Thank you. <laughs> now, you grew up in Boyle Heights, and that's where you're from as well. Mm -hmm. um, can you give me a little insight of what it was like for you growing up there? Um, it was very wild. <laughs> very wild, very hectic, but it was also very homey. Like, it was very grounding, and it taught you a lot about, you know, just compared to some people down the street from you, like, it just taught you a lot on how to be, like, you know, blessed and humbled and you know, appreciate what you have so, yeah. and i do know that it's located on the east side of la yeah. <laughs> so what is the culture like in east la it's very very how do you say well a lot of us are like mostly latino hispanic so it's kind of just like like that like i'm mexican i grew up in a mexican household so it's all like that. East LA and Montebello and Whittier is the same. And then like Boyle Heights is a very, very small part of East LA and it's right by like downtown. So it's very cultured in the sense like it's rockabilly kind of, it's like, it's old funk. It's, it's really like homey. Oh, that's so awesome. Um, who would you say were your musical influences growing up? Ooh, that's so much. That is so many people. Um, definitely Beyonce, because who doesn't love Beyonce? Definitely Beyonce. Um, Tina Marie, Rick James. I have like a lot like from all kinds of genres of music, but I would say like the most important one probably like Beyonce. Before starting your music career, what were you doing? Oh my gosh, I was debating whether if I was going to finish school or not, or college. I finished high school. Um, <laughs> And I was working at Shoe Palace. So that was a big, what was going on there type of moment. But <laughs> did you end up finishing college? No. So I actually had a full ride to, when I got out of high school, I had a full scholarship to about four colleges. And I ended up, I remember going for like the first two months. And I remember just being like, I do not want to be here. Like, I just don't want to be here. I felt like I was taking somebody's spot. Like, every time I was in class, like, I just felt like, oh, my God, like, somebody would kill to have my position, and I'm just, like, not taking advantage of it. So I dropped out, and I did music. Like, I just went hard with it. That's so funny, because I literally dropped out of school. Like, <laughs> yeah, I dropped same. out of school, like, four months ago. And it, I just, I will say, like, mentally, I was just like, eh, I'm over this. And I don't yeah. think I'm gonna go back. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, that's like the best way to go. If you just like take that risk on yourself. Now, what inspired you to actually start experimenting with music? Mm, it was just like my outlet. That was my 100% outlet. I just found like it was my therapy when I was writing. I would write like poetry and then it turned into like rhyming. So then I started rapping and then I started songwriting and I just felt like that was my comfortable place. Like that was my safe place. When you initially started, how, what was your family's reaction? Honestly, it was, it was very, uh, 
at first I was like, oh my God, like they're gonna be like, oh, you wanna be a rapper? Like, are you serious? You wanna be? And I remember coming out to like my parents like that, like, hey guys, this is what I wanna do. I think I'm really good at it. And this is what I got. And they looked at me and it was like this awkward moment of silence. I was like, oh my God. Like, it was kind of like, are you gonna be able to do this or no? And they were just like, wow, like you actually have something. And then, you know, when you're pay, you feel like your parents are supposed to tell you that. Like, mm -hmm. they're not gonna be like, oh, you kind of suck. But I remember going out to like my friends and like my other family members and telling them that like, this is what I wanted. And they would listen to some of my stuff and they actually thought like, you have something here. So that's what I took and I ran with that. <laughs> oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. So when did you finally decide to take that leap and be like, you know what, I'm gonna just go full on and pursue my music career? Mm -hmm. When I dropped out of school, kind of lit the fire underneath my ass and kind of like, okay, you gotta make it happen. Like, you gotta just keep going. And during your journey, what would you say were some setbacks that you were able to get through? Mm -hmm. Kind of being told like no, or like that this is gonna be like impossible kind of thing. It, I use that as like energy and fuel to just keep going. Like, you know, you can't, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So you can't be afraid to get a door slammed in your face. Wow. So like even speaking back onto like how you said you had anxiety. So whenever mm -hmm. you did get those no's, did that like trigger you or? Oh, 100%. A hundred percent. But I think it's very important to keep like that strong foundation of your team and like your circle that's going to keep you like, no, 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 like don't freak out and like keep you grounded and understand like we're chasing something big here. So if it was easy. Everybody would do it. I kind of want you to take us through like your grind. Like what was it that you had to do to get to where you are now? Oh my gosh. I think it was a lot of like self-reflection and it was a lot of like okay you know you have to pick yourself apart in the mirror sometimes and just like you're chasing a completely you're on a different path from whatever the average person is taking so you that w with that comes like you know different obstacles and different situations that you're not used to or you can't go to anybody for advice because they don't know what the hell that's like so it's a lot of self-reflection and kind of just learning on your own and, and keeping yourself grounded when you feel like the world's falling apart. So I just think that's very important. Like the grind is definitely you're alone. <laughs> like they say like, oh, when you're on, like when you're on the way up, like it's, a, it's very lonely, it definitely is. Yeah, I would say whenever you're elevating, like you really see who's there for yeah. you and who's not. Yep. So I do want to ask, like, how were you able to distinguish the people that were really there for you and those who just wanted to like be involved in what you had going on? Yeah, I, I think that character definitely comes through in hard situations. And I started to notice like when things weren't up, who was there? And when things were up, who popped up out of a sudden, all of a sudden, you know? And I just think that that's, it's something that you have to do. It's a hard thing to do because like to eliminate people, even though that attachment is still there, you kind of just at a certain point got to worry about yourself and protect your energy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would you say is like one of the biggest sacrifices you had to make? Um, I think not being around as much. Like I grew up with a big family, a very big family. And a lot of my cousins are like the same age as me. So, you know, we grew up doing this together and like very close. And then when they started to branch out and just go to school and stay locally, and then I went the complete opposite way and I'm traveling here and missing this and missing that, like it definitely takes a toll on you at some point because you just feel like, you know, like, oh, like am I, I'm going off the deep end. Like you're not as attached as you once were. And then like you miss graduations, you miss birthdays, you miss, big things that you felt like you're supposed to be there for, but you're not. And that kind of sometimes tugs on your heartstrings a little bit, but then you just got to think of the bigger picture. Now getting into you and your buzz, because girl, you got a buzz on you. <laughs> <laughs> How exactly were you able to get so much buzz behind you and your music? Uh, well, first shout out to Cardi B because she like reposted one of my videos. So shout out to Cardi. Um, and then after that, you kind of just, I kept going with the raps in the car. So I was able to develop like a really good fan base and a solid fan base. 
Okay, so everybody that I've interviewed that freestyles, mm -hmm. they always bring up the car. <laughs> and I, I know. know they have <laughs> different reasons as to why they freestyle in the car. So uh -huh. what would you say is like your reasoning for freestyling in the car? Honestly, I just think it, it's like you get to do the, the aux or like the Bluetooth and like you have surround sound in the car and it's just a better like audio experience and like, I don't know, I just like it. <laughs> I love, I think it's so interesting because they're like, yeah, I started off in the car and I'm like, what is it about the, the car? car? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't know, I think it's more comfortable. Like you're in your little element. Now, I really want to get into the industry and hear your perspective over some certain topics. Mm -hmm. um, starting off with, I know that you're Latino descent. Mm -hmm. What is your personal experience of being Latino in the music industry? It's very, very difficult because you're going into something like, especially as a rapper, you're going into like a hip hop culture, which is not known for as like the Latino dominant side. So it's kind of like you're dipping into other, like another culture's like, you know, waters and stuff. So you definitely have to kind of just understand that and understand that it's going to be a little harder for you because, you know, you're Mexican or you're whatever Latino descent you are from. Um, yeah, I just think it's it's a challenge. It's a very big challenge and it's a constant like uphill thing, but it, it's going to be really worth it in the end. Now, when it comes to rapping, mm -hmm. do you feel it may be a little harder for a Latino artist to break? Yes, a hundred percent. I think it's harder because like I said, you're going into like a different culture. Like you're not known for like Latino rappers. You're not really, instead like, how do I say this? Like, got to be careful with the way you word things. Um, I think it's just harder because, like I said, you're just, you're not too many people before you have paved the way, kind of. So you're kind of having to figure that lane out on your own. And I do think that, like, if you have the amount of talent, talent that it takes to, you know, put your feet and like stand on the ground when it comes to like making your name in the rap industry, I think you're going to get through it, but it's going to definitely be an uphill battle. How important do you feel it is to embrace your culture throughout your music? Uh, I think it, I think it's very important. I think it's very important. Every time people ask me like, you know, why do you want to be a rapper and stuff like that? And like, what, you know, basically like telling me like, what are you, what are you doing kind of thing? I just think like it's very important when it comes to my music that I stand out and and I let it be known that who I am and like my, where I come from. When it comes to being a female artist, could uh -huh. you name like two things that you feel are misconceptions when it comes to women in hip hop? Mm. And if you can't name two things, you could just think of something on the top of your head that you feel is like a huge misconception with that. I think like not all of us or I don't know I just I for a fact I think a lot of women can rap circles though a lot of women out right now in the music industry can rap circles around a lot of men that are out right now <laughs> I agree. I'm gonna leave it at that I'm gonna leave it at that <laughs> and what do you feel like doesn't get talked about enough when it comes to being a female artist mm. I think like real like love, like relationship kind of go throughs. When it comes to rap especially, I think that, that a lot of other things overshadow like realness in rap. Oh, I love that. Thank you. <laughs> and that leads me to ask you like, what is your perspective on the rap game right now? Right now, I just think it's very confusing. I think that it's a lot of like who can run up the numbers the most and I think that gets distracted by doing whatever it takes to run up those numbers and saying whatever it takes to run up those numbers and I think a lot of people are just jaded when it comes to like what rap really is you know I feel like it's they're using like a lot of fillers right now but yeah so it's like the real artistry yeah. of music is missing I, yeah I don't see like any authenticity really but and you gonna bring it back. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what are some things that you do to keep yourself grounded while dealing with all of the crazy challenges in the industry? Honestly, I pray. I pray a lot. Like I have a very good relationship with God 
and it just centers me. Now we can talk about your music. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, so like you mentioned before, you went viral in 2018 for your freestyle over Cardi B's Money. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that whole experience. That was crazy. I remember where I was. I was on my way to pick up my little sister from school and I was at a red light and my phone all of a sudden was just going like ding, 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 ding. And I was like, what the hell? In my head, I was like, oh my God, something happened. And then I looked at my phone and everybody's sending me like, congratulations. Oh my God, check your Instagram, check your Instagram. So I was like, oh. and I was in so much shock. Like I couldn't even believe it. But after that, it was just like a wave of just insaneness. Like it was just really overwhelming. And it, it definitely was a, a reassurance that I was looking for. Cause that was like right after I dropped out of school. So oh, wow. I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> so what was it about that song in particular that was like, I'm going to do a freestyle over this? It was the beat. It was so simple. It was so simple. It reminded me something of like a too short. Like it was just so simple and it was a loop. And I was like, oh, like this is just fucking nasty. So I was like, all right, I got to get on it. And you killed it. Thank you. <laughs> That's so awesome. Thank you. And I also watched the interview where you talked about working with Hit Boy. And mm -hmm. in the interview, I kind of laughed because you had stated that you didn't really know it was Hit Boy yeah. until, <laughs> yeah. until afterwards. Um, how did you end up working with him and how was that experience? So through my management, they like hooked that whole play up. And I remember being like, they had called me like, oh, we're going to go to the studio with Hit Boy. And in my head, I was like, oh, OK. like. And usually they had called me off the fly too, like, just get ready, we're gonna go. And I was like, okay, so I didn't even bother like really getting dressed. And then after they told me all like his catalog of who he worked with. And I remember being like, oh my God, oh my God, what the hell? Like I didn't go in there with makeup on. I didn't even know who he was. And I was just like, oh, can we just redo this? Can we freaking <laughs> redo the whole thing? It was funny, but that was a good experience. How would you say the vibe was with you two working together in the studio? It was a very, I remember I recorded two songs there and by far those are my favorite songs that I've ever recorded, um, coming soon by the way, but I remember just being like, it was a whole like next level of recording, like his studio was just so like, it was a different like ambiance and I remember being like, okay, you got to step your game up like right <laughs> now. So it was, it was really cool. Now, for people who aren't familiar with your sound, how would you describe it to them? Mm, I think it would be, if I could describe it, I could just, I would say it's real, it's authentic, and it's just very raw. And you know what I could tell? Because listening to your music, like, as soon as the beat started, you were like, on go. And I was like, oh, yeah, she, that's Thank why you. when you talked about the artistry, I was like, she gets it. Thank you. <laughs> Now, you do both English and Spanish music. Mm -hmm. How do you determine which songs, which songs would be hits with two different genres? You know what? I remember, okay, so when I put Kaleidoscope out, which was my first EP, I kind of wanted to give a, a taste of everything. So I did rap, I did singing in English, did singing in Spanish, and I remember being like, okay, this is going to be hard to distinguish what, which ones are going to go. And so I'm de definitely focusing more on the English lane first. And then, you know, as the, the fans and everything builds, we're going to hit them with the Spanish stuff. But I just wanted to give everybody a taste of what's coming. <laughs> have, you ever, like, have you ever accidentally started speaking Spanish on like a song that you meant to speak English on? No, because honestly, like I'm just going to be really real. My Spanish is super, 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 like I get by with my Spanish. I don't like, I'm not like very fluent in Spanish. Um, but no, that never happens to me. Now your two singles, Karma and Out of My Face, have mm -hmm. did well over a million views yes. on YouTube. How did those songs come about for you? Well, Karma was, Karma came out, that was like a whole like kind of breakup, typical like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to totally like diss him and da 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 So that was Karma. Out of My Face was kind of like the aftermath anger that was lingering from that song. Mm -hmm. So it kind of just like connected and it worked very well. Ooh, girl, did you go through that breakup? You already know. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> 
Um, and as you were recording, what would you say were like the emotions to really fuel the fire with the two songs? I think I was just like angry. I was so angry and so it was like, okay, let's just let it out on the mic. And like, I honestly didn't even think, cause Karma was my first single and I didn't even think it was gonna do the numbers that it did. And then in my head, like looking back now, it has like three point something million views. And it's like, oh, okay, got my revenge. <laughs> now, did you think they would, they would do so good when you were recording them? Mm, I knew Karma was gonna be something for like the ladies cause I was like, okay, I can't be the only one going through this emotion. And then out of my face, I, I didn't know when I was recording. I didn't know for sure. We love it when artists go through breakups because I'm gonna just say, <laughs> right? <laughs> they, they make the best songs mm -hmm. when they go through a breakup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you recently dropped In My Whip. What made you wanna title it that? In My Whip kinda was just like a manifestation, kind of good, good vibe coming because I just got a new BMW. So it was kind of like, had to brag a little bit because I worked hard for that. But yeah, I called it In My Whip because, you know, it was like that boss girl mentality. So, yeah. How would you say the recording process was with that song? That one was fun. So every time I'm working with my brother I love so much, KP, um, it's always a good vibe and it's always like, that's like good energy in the studio. So that one was like a definitely fun song to record. You're also dropping an EP yes. this year. Yes. Um, how would you say this one differs from your 2019 Kaleidoscope EP? This one is definitely out of my comfort zone. It is a new sound that me and my team are working on. Um, I actually just finished recording it yesterday out here. And um, I'm excited. I honestly am very excited. I'm excited for everybody to hear it because it is a completely different sound from Kaleidoscope. It's more raw. It's more like what you hear on the radio. It's more melody rap kind of. So I'm excited. What type of vibes can we expect on this? You could expect like boss bitch mentality again. You could expect like turn up. You could expect like bars. You can expect <laughs> a lot. It's going to be really good. Now, when it comes to your music in general, what is it that you want your fans to grasp from it? Mm, just like you hear the, the hard work that every, everything goes into. Like, I honestly want my fans to understand, like, and honestly, in this particular EP, I want them to understand, like, and hear the growth. Because, like I said, it's like a different level of anything that I've ever done. So I want them to hear the growth, most importantly. So we got In My Whip, we mm -hmm. got the new EP dropping this year. What yes. else can we expect from you? Um, I want to, we're about to get on some shows at the end of the year. Hopefully everything lifts. Ooh. Yeah, but yeah, that's, ex I'm really excited to start performing. Had like withdrawals. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that first performance, I feel like it's going to be like. It's going to be so much fun. Crazy. So much fun. <laughs> Um, and before we wrap up, I want to ask you, what would you say are some goals for you this year as an artist? Mm, to expand and to continue growing in my sound, for sure. And what advice would you give to any other up-and-coming female artist? Um, my best advice to you would be to continue going, keep going, and don't stop and stay very, very, very true to you because that's the most important thing. All right, you could definitely shout out your home team, all of your yes. people. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Boyle Heights, shout out to all my team. I love you guys very, very much. Ain't no joke, this ain't funny if you down